after giving a riveting lecture where the speaker shared years worth of groundbreaking research, speaking insightfully and strategically, making an argument that is per persuasive, inviting people to see the subject in brand new ways, that the speaker then tries to transition from giving a lecture to leading a discussion. She makes her closing argument and gestures to the audience and says, I will now open it up for questions. But all she hears is silence. That you could hear a pin drop. That she's waiting for some kind of response. But nothing those few seconds feel like hours, worrying that she didn't connect with the audience. But then in the very back row, someone raises his hand and asks a question. And all of the sudden, hands start popping up all over the auditorium. It's like your first middle school dance, where you're worried all week long. I mean, what if someone asked you to dance? And then you get dressed up, maybe even putting on a shirt with a collar, wearing cologne for the very first time. And then you go to the dance and you are glued to the wall, standing over there by the bleachers, looking at this completely deserted dance floor, even though they're playing your favorite song, Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> but then that first brave, courageous soul wanders out onto the dance floor, and then all of a sudden, everybody else joins in. That so many times, the first step is the hardest step. And the prophet Haggai is inviting the people of God to take the first step in rebuilding Jerusalem. But the only problem is it has been decades since the temple had been destroyed that the people have adjusted. They have found new ways to practice their faith. That they cannot even remember a time when the temple was the center of their faith. But Haggai says it's time to rebuild. And he wants to empower and inspire. He paints a picture of the remnant, the small few who would remain faithful to God. But the first step is always the hardest step. That perhaps the people didn't want to remember because it was so hard to grieve the destruction of the temple in the first place. Or maybe they hesitated because hope is rather frightening. That hope means change. It means an unknown future. And what if we get our hopes up and then everything falls apart? So before that first step of organizing the people and assigning responsibilities and gathering building materials, the prophet invited the people to remember and to envision what could be. That first we have to envision the last step before we can take the first step. That in life and in faith, we need the big picture of God's redemption in order to take that first step towards 
rebuilding. That we need to know that one day all will be well. Which means we can start putting the pieces back together even now. Several Sadducees approached Jesus with a question. And like today with the church, there are Baptists and Presbyterians and Methodists, all of which agree on many things, but they also disagree on other things. And within Judaism, there were Pharisees and Sadducees, Essenes and Jealots, all of which agreed on many things, but they disagreed on others. And the Sadducees did not believe in resurrection. So they went to Jesus with a question to prove that they were correct. It was based on Deuteronomy 25, 5, where it says, if a man dies, the widow marries his brother. And they asked Jesus, well, what happens if a man dies and the widow marries his brother? What does that mean for the resurrection? And more than that, what if there were seven brothers and they all died and she kept marrying the next brother? Who's married in the resurrection? And they sat back and they thought, try to answer that question like those riddles that get us moving in one direction, trying to solve the problem, where we really need to turn around and move the other direction. It's like that riddle which says a grandmother and two mothers and two daughters went to a baseball game, and they all bought tickets. How many tickets did they buy? Well, by my count, a grandmother, and two mothers, and two daughters, that's five tickets. That it gets us looking in one direction. But we need to look in the other. Because the answer is three. That the grandmother is also a mother. Which means a mother is also a daughter. So that's three tickets. That Jesus heard this resurrection riddle. And he says, you're looking in the wrong direction. That resurrection is about a hope where all will be well. And it speaks to right now. That God is the God of the living and not the dead. Don't get caught up in all of those other questions. That resurrection is about redemption. Making all the wrongs right. And healing all the pain and brokenness. Do not focus on anything else. That we've got to keep that big picture in mind. As Kirby Gotze writes, if our confessions of faith begin with, in the beginning, God, we should be prepared for them to end with, in the end, God. That God had the first word, and God will have the last word. And the last word is a word of redemption. Which means we can take the first step towards rebuilding even now. That in the beginning, we find humanity in a garden. And humanity lives in harmony with God. But Gardner Taylor points out this is not the last garden in the Bible. There's also the Garden of Gethsemane, where we find Jesus wrestling with the darkness of this world, where he stands in utter solidarity with humanity and creation, and where he says, violence 
and conflict will not win. That they will not have the last word. But that's not the last garden in the Bible. That in the book of Revelation, we find another garden in the very last chapter of Scripture. It's God's final word where we find the tree of life standing next to the river of life and it bears good fruit and it says that its leaves are healing the nations. That God says, do not fear for I will abide with you. That we need the big picture of God's redemption to invite us to the first step of rebuilding, putting all of the pieces back together. After the horrific earthquake in 2010 in Haiti, Hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives. So many homes and buildings were destroyed. It was hard to imagine the first step in rebuilding. A year later, in 2011, in an article, it says that still 600,000 people were living in tents. That's more than seven times the population of Auburn, who did not have a home. So several organizations got together, including the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, and they went to an architect firm in Atlanta to figure out the first step. They developed a concept for a rubble house where they would collect all the debris and rubble left over from the homes that were destroyed, and they would take it and fill wire baskets, making the new walls of new homes. It would not fix every problem in Haiti, but it was a first step. And it was rooted and inspired by that big picture of redemption where light shines in darkness. Whenever we find ourselves unsure about what to do, or where to begin. We can look around and see what we have at hand. Perhaps it is what is left over from the earthquake in our lives. And we can remember that big picture of God's steadfast love, which says that one day all will be well. And we can take that first step towards rebuilding. That we can walk towards God's steadfast love. with every step that we take. Amen.